So now that we spent some time uh, dealing with actually what fractions are and how do we compare them and how do we convert between decimals and fractions, we're going to spend the next couple of days just looking at fractions alone. After that, uh, next week we're going to delve into decimals, which show, should go a little bit faster than fractions because they're a little bit easier to work with. Um, so for fractions, let's, let's look at an addition problem first. I'm going to pose it to you a little bit differently than you might have seen it, seen it before. Um, I want you to think about how you would do this problem. How would you do uh, one-fourth plus one-third? And I drew the picture here because a lot of times we want to just memorize rules and we don't actually think about what this means. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm dividing these. Notice I'm, I'm showing you what's difficult about this problem. Once again, we saw this in yesterday's video. Is there are, These are not out of, they're not divided into equal sectors. Um, so I cannot just take one-fourth. I could take one-fourth and, and add it on to the one-third here, um, but that's not going to give me a fraction of the overall circle. It's going to be very, very difficult to see unless I take that circle and I divide it up into equal amounts. So notice what I'm doing here. I'm taking my, my circle that's divided into thirds. I'm dividing it into twelfths. So I'm taking each third, each being multiply, and dividing it into fourths. Here, I'm taking each fourth and dividing it into thirds. Each, again, multiply. So each sector gets multiplied by three. I have 12 sectors total then. So the first step I took to complete this essentially uh, was to split these up into equal sectors. So split both, uh, you want to split both of these into equal sectors. So now, I'm able to get a little bit clearer picture of what I'm adding. All right, so what do I have here? With one third, I've got. Uh, let's rewrite this up here. With one one fourth, I've got three out of twelve uh, sectors shaded in green. With one third, I have four out of twelve sectors shaded in green. So notice what happens when I kind of shade in, take my three sectors from my one-fourth. Okay, so again, I took the, the way I got that is I multiplied by three, top and bottom. One-third, I multiplied by four, because each of the thirds gets split into fourths. All right, what if I took my one-fourth over here, my three-twelfths, and I kind of shaded it in on my other circle here? So I took three of those twelfths over here. Notice, shade three of those in. Now notice how many sectors are shaded in. I have my green plus my yellow. That's going to give me seven total sectors of the circle shaded in. So when I get these common denominators, when I split them into equal amounts, it makes it a lot easier to see what we're adding. So the next question is then, if that's addition, how do I do a subtraction problem? Well, you do a subtraction problem. Notice here's what it looks a little bit different. But we do it the same way. I still want to make sure that I'm subtracting something that has equal sectors. I still need to get those common denominators. So one-fourth minus one-third, we're going to treat this the exact same way. Each of my one-fourths, each of my fourths of a circle are going to be split into thirds. So it makes this three twelfths of an overall circle. Each of my thirds is going to be split into fourths. That makes four out of twelve. And if I do, okay, if I do three twelfths minus four twelfths, notice I'm, I'm, I'm subtracting a small number minus a bigger number. That's going to give me a negative number. So if I take away, notice what's left over. If I've got three twelfths on the right, three twelfths on the left, that leaves one twelfth left over, so this is going to be negative one twelfth. And now that we kind of have a picture in our mind of what this looks like, let's, let's actually look at some rules. So think about what we did before. We found common denominators. Um, one thing we're going to do, since we have subtraction, if there's subtraction, we're going to change it to addition. Then when we're ready to add, we're going to keep the same denominators. And finally, uh, when we get an answer, we're going to simplify. Um, we talked about what simplifying looks like yesterday. One little uh, side note here, get it, that note on its side. Um, five and three-fourths, how do we convert 
mixed numbers to improper fractions. We're going to need to know how to do this because one thing I'm going to have you do before you do uh, any of these finding common denominators, adding the numerators, it's going to be a lot easier because now that negatives are involved, I'm going to have you convert everything to improper fractions. Remember, a mixed number has a whole number with a fraction involved. An improper fraction has a larger number over a smaller number. It's just rewritten. So 5 and 3 fourths, notice 5 is the same thing as 20 fourths. So really, 5 and 3 fourths is 20 fourths plus 3 fourths. So you might remember the easy way to do this is to do the, the bottom times the big number plus the top. Um, but this is why it works, 23 fourths. It's 4 times 5 plus 3 because 4 times 5 is 20 fourths uh, plus that 3 fourths there. Um, the negative 2 and 7 eighths, don't get thrown off by that negative there. It's not like the 7 eighths is positive and the, the 2 is negative. The whole thing is negative. So we're going to ignore that negative sign for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do 8 times 2, uh, and then I'm going to add 7 just like I normally would. So uh, 2 is 16 eighths plus 7 is 23 eighths, and then I'm just going to throw the negative on. So when you convert negative numbers to improper fractions, ignore the negative. Remember, the whole thing is kind of negative, so we'll do, uh, we'll do the, the, the bottom times the big number plus the top, and then we'll put the negative on uh, at the very end. So let's look at a couple examples here. Keeping in mind our four rules. All right, first problem is going to be pretty easy because I gave you common denominators. We have 6 sevenths plus negative 3 sevenths. So we'll keep the same denominator, which is going to be 7, and then I'm going to fill in the top by doing 6 plus negative 3. That's a positive plus a negative. Gives me 3 when I find the difference. is going to be positive because uh, the 6 is larger. The next problem has 9 for the common denominator. Already there, so I don't have to do it. Notice, I'm just going to change subtraction to addition first. So that becomes negative 2 ninths plus negative 5 ninths. I'm going to keep my same denominator of 9, so I'll write that there. And now all I have to do is negative 2 plus negative 5. That's the same sign of a negative plus a negative makes it more negative. So I get 7, but it's going to be negative 7 ninths. For the next problem, I have 5 ninths minus h, so that's 5 ninths minus negative 7 twelfths. Don't even mess the, with the subtraction. Change that to plus positive 7 twelfths. Now I have 9 and 12. Common denominator here, I could do 9 times 12 and get 108, but then I'm going to have to simplify a lot at the end. The least common denominator here is 36. So I can take uh, 9 goes into 36, 12 goes into 36. So notice what I do. I'm going to write my denominators first. And then it's going to be a simple uh, fill-in-the-blank uh, option here. So I'm going to write 30 over 36. I'm going to write my plus sign, and then I'm going to write over 36. And then 5 ninths, notice, I have to multiply 9 by 4 to get that to equal 36. So that means to keep that the same. I can't just leave 5. I have to do 5 times 4, which is 20. So 5 ninths rewritten is 20 36. It's the same fraction but just written uh, in a little bit different form. 7 twelfths, I have to multiply the bottom by 3, which means I have to multiply the top by 3 as well. That's going to give me 21 36. So now this becomes a very simple problem. I have my denominator of 36, and I'm just going to do 20 plus 21, which is 41. There's nothing else I can simplify, so this is my final answer. By the way, when you simplify, check to see if it's divisible by 2, by 3, by 4, or by 5. Um, and then 7 is usually one that you can throw in there, too. If you're not sure the trick for dividing by 3, that's something you can ask me about tomorrow if we haven't already talked about that in class. All right, last problem here. Notice I have two mixed numbers. Again, I said I want you to convert these to improper fractions. So after we make this plus negative 4 and 5 eighths, let's turn these. This is going to be 5 thirds plus negative uh, 37 eighths. So 3 and 8, common denominator here. Notice 3 is prime, so my common denominator here is just going to be 3 times 8, which is 24. So I'm going to have over, something over 24 plus a negative something over 24. Notice how I put that negative in there first, because guess what? The main thing is people forget here. People do all the work, and they forget to bring down the negative. Do it first. All right, so I'm going to multiply uh, 5 thirds top and bottom by 8. So 5 thirds becomes 40 24ths. Uh, 
negative 37 eighths, multiply top and bottom by 3. Pull out a calculator here. Let's do 37 times 3. And we get 111. So 40 24ths plus negative 111. Notice that's a positive plus a negative, where the negative is larger, so my answer is negative. Uh, so I have to find the difference between these two because we're going to take away 40 of the negatives with that positive 40. And I'm going to end up with 71 negatives left over. Uh, so now all I have to do, let's just make sure that makes sense. If I just had, uh, notice the original problem was 1 and 2 thirds minus 4 and 5 eighths. 1 minus 4 is going to put us close to uh, negative 3. If I round my answer, 71, I'm going to make it 75, 24, I can make it 25. 75 divided by 25 is going to give me a number close to 3. So my answer kind of makes sense here. That's, that's one of the things you have to kind of get uh, practice in is making sure your answer makes sense. Um, now you have some problems from the book you're going to do to practice adding and subtracting. Look back at your notes if you have to. Um, remember the rules that we worked on. Remember the whole, uh, the whole idea here is that before we can add or subtract, we have to have the same amount of sectors that we're splitting each fraction into or the same common denominators.